Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening for the virtual opening reception of Art in the Age of COVID, showcasing artworks in our main gallery and in our window displays now until January 23rd of 2021. I'm Amanda Gorsegner, board member of the Atlantic Highlands Arts Council. Here with us this evening, we have our president of the Arts Council, Stephanie Ladiana, Ellen Martin, board member of the Arts Council, and our two guest jurors for this show, Sheila Casey and Jennifer Watson. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to thank our funders for tonight's program. This program is made possible in part by Monmouth Arts through funding from the Monmouth County Board of Chosen Freeholders and the New Jersey State Council on the Arts. Now for a bit of quick virtual housekeeping. When you enter this meeting, you were muted. Please stay on mute during the presentation so we can maintain the sound quality for everyone during tonight's program. If you haven't already done so, you may put your Zoom viewing option on speaker view on the top right of your screen to allow for the best image for home viewing of tonight's program. And we'll be screen sharing our videos and slides this evening as well. Coming up at the Atlantic Highlands Arts Council, we have the annual members exhibit from January 29th to March 6th in 2021. So if you're not a current member, um, please do renew or sign up. And if you are a current member, you'll be receiving some information from us in the near future when we announce the show and the open calls. So make sure to watch your email. I'd also like to mention that we're in the middle of our annual Peel fundraiser here at the end of 2020. And we'd welcome any contributions to help our free and low cost programs run in through the next year. To make a donation, you can visit our website. For any accessibility requests for our upcoming programs, please email us at Atlantic Highlands Arts Council at gmail.com. And you can find that information in the chat box tonight. I'd also like to take a moment to thank our board member, Ellen Martin, for all of the energy and dedication she put into this exhibition. She's been working hard on this for many months, and we're so excited to see it come to fruition in the gallery and virtually. So a big thank you to Ellen. If you have any inquiries about the artwork in the show, you can contact us at the email listed in the chat box or visit our website at ahearts.org. We'd like to start the evening with a short video of all the works in the show, then we'll pass things over to Ellen and the jurors to get the conversation rolling. So I'm going to do a little bit of screen sharing now so we can get started here.
Like I, I can't get her sound. How do I unmute her? Might be muted. We don't hear you. Press the unmute button on the on the bottom. Can you right. hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'll start all over again. I'm Ellen Martin. I'm on the board of the Atlantic Highlands Arts Council, and I'm also the exhibition manager for Art in the Age of COVID, which was our first ever juried exhibition. So I want to thank everybody for submitting work. Um, we had 77 artists from four states, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Iowa submitted a total of 188 pieces. And the two judges selected 68 pieces from 53 artists. The exhibit is gonna run through January 23rd and we're hoping to have a live open house on Saturday, January 9th from 11 to seven. And if there is bad weather or for any other reason, we will have that on the 23rd, January 23rd. So I wanted to read a little bit about what one of our board members, Eileen Moon, wrote about the theme of the exhibition. Can I hold for a second, Ellen? Stephanie, sure. could you spotlight Ellen for us and, and take me off the way everyone can see Ellen speaking? Okay. Thank you. Artists are by nature accustomed to isolation able to find inspiration in times of aloneness, able to translate the unspoken and speak to us from their own experience. In this way, artists are able to create community even in isolation and to shed light on meanings and connections that endure even in the most difficult of circumstances. In these days of uncertainty and isolation, in a time of both literal and metaphorical darkness, this exhibit explores the nature of isolation and celebrates the enduring resilience of the human spirit. So that was written by Eileen Moon, one of our board members as well. So now I'd like to tell you a little bit about our judges, both of whom I've known for years, um, Jennifer Watson and Sheila Casey. Jennifer is a recipient of the New York State Council on the Arts Painting Fellowship and has been included in solo and group exhibitions at the Morgan Lehman Gallery in New York, Jeffrey Young Gallery in Massachusetts, the Noyes Museum of Art in New Jersey, and Project for em Empty Spaces in New Jersey, among many others. One of her pieces was included in the recent spring edition of Art Maze Magazine, and her reviews and features have appeared in Art News Magazine, Gannett Newspapers, The Star Ledger, and The Huffington Post. Jen curated and organized exhibits locally at the Middletown Arts Center and SICA, the Shore Institute of the Arts, and has promoted exhibitions nationally and internationally while working with Untitled Art Fairs, the National Academy of Design, and the American Federation of the Arts. She holds a degree from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and studied visual arts at Mason Grove School of the Arts. Sheila is a visual artist and writer, has exhibited locally since 2008, winning a number of awards. She studied art history at Purchase SUNY and Rutgers. As a journalist, she began her career writing art reviews for Gannett newspapers in Connecticut and later became a general news editor and staff writer of the Two River Times, right here in Red Bank, actually. She has worked as a graphic designer and teacher of creative writing. So now we are going to go through the um, honorable mentions and the winners and the judges will give us their input on each piece. Thank you. Hey, um, let's see, sorry. And, uh, this one is Inner Workings by Marjorie Cohen. Um, it's pen, ink, gouache, and it's nine by 12 inches, just so you get a sense of it. Um, uh, it's a playful 
and somewhat grotesque drawing that meditates on the mysterious and complex process, processes of the body and mind. Um, I love the detail in this piece uh, with its sometimes um, obsessive marks of the ink that contrast with the softer gouache of the painting. Um, I think the composition really captures this action of uh, like seeming kind of cell tissue maybe being invaded by, you know, like a malady, like a coronavirus. Um, and that the ink, um, the palette really accentuates the uh, dichotomy of this place, playful composition with the feel of, of macabre or, you know, kind of impending doom or something. <laughs> Uh, this one is Social Distancing, um, painted by M Michael Cortez. It's mixed media and it's nice size at 36 by 36 inches. Um, I think a lot of things are going on in the painting. Um, there's these discrete circles, individuals in their own way, um, but in a large painting with some subtle la layering and texture. Um, at, at first glance, the piece feels to me kind of playful, but the, you know, you have these colorful circles and it's loosely painted. You have the application of different materials, but then, um, you know, as you're kind of drawn into it, looking more closely, um, you, uh, you know, you see these circles that are uncolored, um, a couple are a little more drippy and they seem, you know, kind of gloomy. Um, and then also it's, you know, it's loose and, you know, you feel playful, but then you have these kind of regimented and organized spacing of the circles. So you do get this feeling of, you know, that whole kind of lockdown, social distancing, regulation, order. Um, and it kind of, also kind of feels like to me, like the pandemic meets uh, a Damien Hirst painting. Unmute there. Okay. This uh, is Zoom Dream by Eileen Kennedy. I believe it's a woodcut. Um, I know it's a relief print, um, and it's a, it's a fairly large one. Um, I don't have the exact measurements. Jen, you showed me up here, but, uh, oh. I would say it's <laughs> probably 14 inches. The image area is about 14 inches and she's given us a typical zoom, uh, panel, um, of faces mainly, uh, but she she breaks the grid interestingly in several ways um, that are very they're humorous, um, even though it's uh, you know with the lovers meeting online we assume uh, it's very very playful and fun as well as. Um, expressing a range of other emotions. Uh, I like the escape rope and the person trying to break out of the frame. So this was uh, delightful. Okay. This is Feeling Moody by um, Elizabeth Smith. And this one once again, it's maybe a 15 inch box that you see the main box with a smaller box attached underneath. And it's got um, a nice neutral tonality that lets you focus on the shapes of the sculpted clay faces. Um, and it's also got a secret, which is the little scroll in a box underneath. The scroll is written on drafting vellum. 
um, which is often called parchment. And the very fact that it's a scroll under there uh, links us back to the past and to plagues of the past, because the scroll is, of course, the, one of the oldest forms of the book of, um, I think the slab may be the oldest, but then you get the scroll. So um, I wish you could see that. It's a modern calligraphy that she's using in there. And um, she discusses uh, the lockdown period and quarantine. Uh, she's got 40 faces there. I guess it's for the 40 days of quarantine. Now we gave this best sculpture. The um, artist presented it to us on a stand, which integrated well with the uh, piece itself, which is a handmade linen shirt on um, embroidered and appliqued all over with um, a lot of the pictures are car cartoons, memes, and images associated with um, this time, we've seen many of them in various media, uh, also with sayings for various personages about um, this COVID pandemic, um, some from our famous soon to be ex uh, president and some from other sources. When you see the detail on this shirt, it's, it's really a remarkable work. She has worked in the labels. Um, it's all integrated. It's all very much of a piece, making it um, a really outstanding sculpture when seen in the round in an unusual medium. Um, so this is uh, the, our best, you know, painting um, in the park by Brian McCarty. It's oil on canvas, size 24 by 36. Um, so this is one of the few places offering a, a sense of freedom during lockdown was the park. Um, it, I kind of was drawn to it because uh, luckily I had started jogging last year, so I was pretty, uh, I was ahead of everything for the pandemic. So I was already, I had my shoes and everything for jogging. So um, that was my, you know, go-to place for an escape and um, check out the, the paths. Um, so this, this empty park would have been a paradise. It was a little crowded at first. Um, so the piece, I think really draws you in and um, really like the contrast between these, uh, you know, these dark shadows with the rest of the, the ground. And interesting enough that really most of the greenery is, you know, the greens are in the, in the shadows. Um, the flatness and meticulous execution is, it's very satisfying and uh, the palette it's interesting because it's it's uh, subdued while capturing that still that fall season. All right, this was the best work on paper, um, and it is a a watercolor, as you can maybe tell right off, and it's relatively small. It's um, eight by 10, perhaps, certainly no larger than nine by 12. And it is um, a portrait. It's a head, the head of a woman, and it's exceptionally well done. And this to execute in a transparent watercolor technique that Meyer is using here is outstanding. 
it's a very difficult thing to do technically. Um, and she does it with a uh, freedom and um, almost a playfulness in the, the dashes you'll see uh, of green and brown around the, um, the margins and renders a, 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 a picture that is very attractive and we all wish we looked this good this summer. Um, so thank you, Randy. So this was our best mixed media pick, uh, Soul Ascending Green Gate, Sarah C. Slee Brown. Um, this one is 12 by 24. It's one of a series. Um, so this piece combines collage and digital work to subtle moving effect with its dusky tones and delicate shapes that float over a suggestive landscape. Um, it's beautifully and meticulously crafted. The elements uh, are a bit haunting where you, you really sense the isolation and confinement and you know possible loss with this pandemic time. Okay, now this one is was best at conveying the theme. Um, here we have a woman sitting by herself, uh, we assume, uh, in a brightly decorated place, looking across the street at a woman who's standing at a window looking back. And we can see that it's, we can guess that it's summer by the uh, flags on the windowsill. And it's also an architectural style that's very familiar around here. It looks like Red Bank, Keyport, Asbury, we all have uh, buildings of this era. Um, and there's a wistfulness to it. It's obviously a bright day. Uh, but the women, we know they can't really meet, not right then. And um, that, that conveys the theme of this time pretty strongly to us. This is a very large painting, by the way, I should, should also point out. This is, I, I wish I had the exact dimensions. Um, it's maybe 36 inches high, okay, to give you a, a, a guideline. So this was our best in show meditation by Carla Valentino. Um, this is mixed media and it's 24 by 20 inches. Um, we chose it as best in show because it, it really, really captures the experience of the pandemic and it's beautifully executed. Um, it really glows and it, you know, has this highly symbolic and resonant imagery um, that again conveys, you know, this, this pandemic time. Um, <clears throat> you know, I feel like we're, it, it, you know, it really draws you in. Um, it feels like we're trying to you know, navigate our, our way through the crisis. Um, and then, you know, with this, the, the ship, the maps, uh, the numbers, um, you know, we don't, but we don't have, a, we don't have a real uh, linear path to our, our destination. You really get, get the sense of this, you know, kind of floating, you know, where we, where is this taking us? Um, the composition works while being organized um, and dynamic. And I, I also feel like the, the artist may have been um, influenced by Jasper Johns. I get some of that imagery and mapping like his work as well. So 
So, hi everyone. I am Stephanie uh, Ladiana, and I am the president of the Atlantic Highlands Arts Council. And I am actually at the gallery now, and in a few minutes I'm going to um, give you a little bit of a video tour of the actual gallery and how the artwork has been laid out. If you haven't seen it already online, or you won't have an opportunity to come to the gallery. But I just wanted to give you a little background. The Arts Council is, uh, we are a nonprofit that's been in existence and serving the arts community in Atlantic Highlands and, and the surrounding areas for 13 years. We are, a, um, the, we are the producer of the Film One Fest, which uh, is a one minute film festival. That is our largest production. We are housed in this beautiful space on First Avenue where we host um, classes and workshops. We do concerts, and this was all pre-pandemic, obviously, a lot of it is virtual now. Um, classes, workshops, concerts, um, and we host eight to 10 exhibits every year. Um, this is literally one of the most beautiful um, spaces in Atlantic Highlands. Uh, as Amanda mentioned, we have a member show uh, next month and um, we have windows that are for rent 24-7 uh, gallery and an art shop that, uh, that um, displays artwork of local artisans. So if you don't have an opportunity to get here, I would encourage you to try to do so at some point in the future. And um, for those of you who can't get here for the exhibit, which ends on January 23rd, I'm going to... Um, give you a little tour right now. Okay, so just bear with me. So as you enter our gallery, this is what you see. Can you make that the speaker view? Uh, just a second, guys. I'm doing both things, so let me. Is that better? You can do it on your own, yeah, by pressing speaker view. Okay, so. And I think that's everything. So uh, to end tonight, we will be um, showing the um, one video, I don't know if you caught that, um, we had one video um, submitted, and that was mugging uh, the art of social distancing. And Manda's going to play that for us now. 
And we're gonna stay on after this, this is about a six minute video. Um, we'll stay on for anybody that hangs out till after that. Anyway, enjoy. I know what do you want? I'm lost. What? I know, I'm lost. I don't understand what you're saying to me. Give me your wallet. Oh, great. I'm being mugged. Yeah, you are. Come on, hand it over. What what are you doing? I'm leaving. You're going nowhere. What the hell is that? I shoved you. Oh. Yeah? You want some more? Oh. Huh? You can give me oh. a now? Oh! Oh, my knee! What do you want me? Oh. This is on you. This is on you. Oh, he's walking up on.
Hey, 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 No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Come on. Sir, fill out a police report. Yes, officer. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this evening. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us, and congratulations to all of the winners, all of the honorable mentions, and to everyone that was involved in the show. Thank you so much, and have a great night. Bye, everyone.